Okay, video 44, take five. This is the fifth attempt I've tried to do this video without interruption. Uh, I'm starting to get a bit frustrated, so I'm gonna try and do it as quickly as I can. In this video, I want to show how we can do, uh, how we can customize file type filtering. Um, uh, most people know that if you uh, enable this type filter here, we can choose a variety of different types of file to list. Uh, which is based on signature and not an extension. So we could ask it to list that and that and that, say, and um, all of the text files, regardless of what they are. Um, we can click activate and it will list all of those for us. And we can save these as well if we wish. We click, click the save button there, uh, go to a folder where we want to save it, like a network store that's accessible by your colleagues. We can save it and then um, we can reopen it at any time. Because it's just a little text file. So as you can see, uh, it saves it like that. So that's really simple and really easy. And these groups are good. Uh, they're really comprehensive. They contain a lot of different types of things, uh, of files rather, um, and they're, they're good for quick navigation. Uh, Myself and, and the guys I work with, uh, who I'm lucky enough to work with, we've been working in this way for quite a few years and um, uh, credit to a friend I work with who made the suggestion recently of, well, why don't we customise these groups to make them easier and quicker for people of a non-technical background who might be looking through um, your case. Um, and because this dialogue here, which people may not realise, but it's just based on a text file that's within the root of your x -Waste Forensics directory uh, and that can be changed. Um, so in here is my program file as Xbase Forensics and that's the file that controls that dialog behind there. Uh, and you, we can edit that quite simply just using um, Notepad or whatever. And this is the structure. So you've got three asterisks to designate the group specifications, in this case email. Uh, and then you've got all the various email types as defined by the guide at X-Waste Forensics. And as you scroll through it, you'll notice other little asterisks. Here. So you've got peer-to-peer -peer there and the various things for peer-to-peer. -peer, and then you've got internet stuff there and all the things for internet. And each type is prefixed with a minus because by default, uh, none of it is en enabled. Uh, you could change that at, 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 um, at kind of a lower level for use of a better phrase um, so that whenever X-Waste Forensics is launched, these particular items are enabled by default um, in the type filter rather than disabled simply by substituting the minuses for a plus. So I'm not going to do it, but if I save that and uh, re-enable the type filter, EML and EMLX will be on by default. So to demonstrate this um, a bit more closely, uh, I just deactivate all that. I've created a quick case. I've added two forensic images to it. I've not yet refined the volume snapshot and that's important for type verification. That particular option there is the one that checks that all the files are what they appear to be. Uh, and Xbox Forensics acts accordingly on each file once it knows, um, for example, a word processing file is a word processing file. It will then do certain things with it um, with these other options if you enable them. Um, and the type filter is uh, very much uh, enhanced if this is enabled. So for this quick case, I'm just going to tick these few. Uh, in fact, I don't want hashing because we don't need that for this. Um, and click OK. I'm going to choose both forensic images and off it will go. This won't take long because there are only small images courtesy of the guys from X-Ways. And the fact I've already done it four times, so it uh, reads it pretty quick. Right, so just to reiterate that, now that that's all refined, I will enable that those few little filters I've just enabled, right click at the case root for recursive exploration, click OK, and all my uh, lovely files that are of type word, uh, DOC or DOCX or text are illustrated for me. No problem there. So to show you how to make more suitable groupings, perhaps for your particular team or your particular remit, whatever that might be, be it e-discovery or criminal work or whatever. Um, 
it's really quite easy. If I just uh, shut X ways down for a moment, and uh, I'll just make another copy of that just for a minute. Right. If I open this up and make a new line, add three new asterisks of my own, and call this my custom group. And then I'm going to go and find some of the files that I want to see all the time. So um, you'll notice that they're pluses because it's saved from my filtering that I just had on. Oops. Teach me to use the keyboard. So copy that, go back to the top, paste that in there. I also want XLS spreadsheets. So I'm going to copy those few there. And I also want PDF files because uh, my case is investigating PDF files because whoever it is that we're looking at has been saving stuff as PDFs. Okay. And they're all minus by default apart from the few at the top, so I'm just going to make these a plus as well. And then just for good measure, I'm going to do another group called my second custom group. And this is just going to contain EML and EML X's because I look at emails on Apple Macs all the time and I look at emails on computers all the time. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. Oh no, I want to enable those with a plus. Save it. And just in case, I'm just going to copy and paste that again. Because X-Ways Forensics writes whatever your last filter was enabled back to that file. Um, so uh, just to make sure, hopefully everything will go on Kidori. So I'm going to reopen my case. And with any look, what do you know? Up the top there, my custom group with the files I've got selected. And we can tick or untick or whatever. Not quite sure why they weren't all pluses because I'm sure that's what I had set. But um, anyway. It's still easy enough to tick and untick as you see fit. Um, so I'm just going to have that on, uh, nothing else. Activate, right click, OK. And these are all the files that my filter type has enabled. And what we could even do, uh, I've not done this before, so it might go horribly wrong. And if it does, uh, I apologize, but I'm fairly sure that um, if I edit this file again and take everything else out, um, actually, how best to do this? Just one second. Start from the bottom, work all the way up to there. Delete everything else. Save that. Let's do that. And launch X phase again. I don't actually know if you have to exit x -Face Forensics or not. Um, it might just, oops, that doesn't look good. Maybe it doesn't work if you take all the categories out. Let's see if I find out. Oh, no, maybe that doesn't work. <laughs> um, but anyway, the customizations to it do. Um, so just put that back on again, just to show you. Right click, click OK. And there's my emails as well. Though. Um, and so you can easily create groups to suit your needs um, and simply just have them enabled uh, and nothing else. And by doing that, you can effectively replicate forensic software that you might be more familiar with that you've migrated from. Um, and it appeases all of those people that uh, who I hear time and time again saying, yeah, but I just want to be able to click a group and see everything. 
Um, well, now you can, but with Belvan, because you can actually dictate totally either in agreement with your management or in agreement with a legal term, uh, a legal team, uh, whatever it may be, um, you can say, look, we're, we're only going to list these types of files, and if everyone says yes, you can't go wrong. Uh, really good. I really like it.